All right, so here we go. It's the first kind of big project with the new CNC. Um, not very good at this at all, but that's why we're doing this. So we can learn a little bit. So I don't have any good way of holding my tool holders at the moment. So figured I could buy a tool holder or I can make my own. I got a bunch of this plywood lying around. So basically all we're gonna do is on each of those dots, throw a little hole in it. Um, five, six holders, and uh, was five holders up top? Yeah, five up top, five on the bottom. We'll probably do two or three of these so we can layer them up a little bit. And it uh, should be a fun way just to goof around a little bit and learn a little something. So I'll try to show you how, how I went about it and uh, go from there. So first up, work holding, very simple, a couple of toe clamps. Um, it's just plywood, so I'm not super worried about it kicking around. Um, and I didn't really have anything else other, anything else big enough to hold it. So hopefully this works. Um, if this is aluminum, I don't know if I'd personally trust it yet, but I also don't know what I'm doing. So we'll find out maybe later on down the road. But for now, yeah, just a little bit of plywood. That should be plenty good enough. Procedure. So in this case, we just turn on path pilot. Uh, for me, it's just extension cord. Wait for that to load up. Once that's loaded up, we can pop on the main, which for me is right over here. Turn that on. Machine powers up. Uh, from there, oh, that's right. We gotta do the e-stop. So the e-stop's right here. So loosen that up. It's now out, it's still active. Push the green button, and the machine is pretty well set at that point. From there, we just come back to Path Pilot. And uh, what am I doing? Let's reset and then we can just, uh, reference everything. There we go. We'll start with height. I like to do height first, just so that way, if it's lower for whatever reason, or I have stuff set up here, it doesn't try to like reference the X uh, coordinates and smack the tool across it. So usually I do Z first, get it up and out of the way, have it reference that, and then I'll check the others and uh, it's, it saved me one drill bit. <laughs> so just hit reference. It was right there, so it wasn't a big deal. Reference Y, not too far. It's just gonna go until it hits the limit switch. In this case, the limit switch is, whoops, it's on this side. Yeah, it's just this guy right here. You got a little roller and a sensor here and just um, touches uh, this little ramp and that shows the limits. And same with the X up front. Set, all right. So with it referenced in, I'm going to start using the um, conversational bit here and get my coordinates real quick, and I'll be right back with that part. All right, so we're back. I got the conversational set up pretty much how I wanted. Um, I'll walk you through that in a second. First up, I just want to come down here. So this is the edge of the table travel right now. Uh, so I actually had to bump this hole in. I bumped it a quarter of an inch. I could have made it a lot closer, but it was just easier. Um, because I couldn't get far enough to actually do the full pocket how it was set up right now. So without having to go through and change everything, I just figured we'll bump it over. I don't really care. It's still gonna hold the tool. Um, the other thing I was checking was just to make sure that as I did the hole, um, the tool holder would not hit the toe clamps and I, they don't. So that's not an issue here. Uh, another thing, and I'll show you over there again as well, is that uh, the the going between the pockets there's two things i wanted to check uh, one was obviously the height i measured that out two inches will clear that so i set that in there the other one is when it goes back and forth between the holes i don't know what order it's going to do it in i'm assuming it's going to do it in the order that i put it into the um the drill chart which is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh if it does that the other thing I'm curious about is if when it does this hole, if it comes back to, if it routes out the pocket, and then it comes back to center and then comes across and it routes out the pocket and back to center and across and, and for all of them really. Or if it routes out the pocket and wherever it ends, we'll say it's over here, if from there it goes straight to the center or if it ends over here, if it from here it comes straight to the center. That I'd like to keep an eye on just cause I'm curious. I don't know how it does it. It's not a big issue for me today. Um, but it might be something to keep in mind for, you know, future jobs. So, um, yeah, anyway, so that's this part. Uh, I think work holding wise are pretty well set. Uh, let's come over to here. 
and basically let me see here there we go that should show up um nice and easy i just threw everything in a table um wasn't super specific use the machine to measure it out because it's very low precision it's just wanted to get it done today and kind of just wanted to mess with the machine a little bit today um i came over here threw in plastic it actually gave me these speeds and beads so we're just going to use them see what happens with it um the little bit i've cut wood it doesn't seem to really matter so <laughs> Uh, run it fast, run it hard, have fun with it. Uh, we do have the proper tool in here and I'll show you that in a second. And I did double check, we do have the tool loaded. So we are using the tool that I intend to use which is that 1 8 uh, ball end mill. Uh, mostly just because it was already in there. <coughs> and why not? Um, let's see, so yeah, so we got, that's our tool, uh, or our drill chart. And then we're gonna come into pocket and this is what I set up. So it's a three quarter inch hole. Um, these are exactly three quarter inch, so I don't know if I'm gonna leave it like that or if I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, see how they work. If they're a little too tight, then obviously I can always ream them out a little bit, not a big deal. Um, step over, kept it fairly mild. It's a 50% step over. Um, then we'll go super crazy with it. I figure that should be acceptable. Um, yeah, super crazy, 50% step over. Uh, depth of cut, I did three tenths of an inch, just make two clean passes, nice and simple. Uh, it should ramp in from my understanding. So fingers crossed it actually does. Uh, and then same thing, double checked, made sure it was the right tool. Everything's good there. So I think we're set. Um, oh, and here's the offsets. And this just shows the tool. I've got a few in here. Uh, like I said, this one just happened to be in there, ready to go. So I plan on using it. Um, so I think, oops, we'll go back, conversational. We'll post this, give me one second. All right, so I learned a new little, I guess, quick tip for the day. We'll make it our quick tip of the day. Um, so I'll be honest, I haven't used this screen as much because usually I kind of have an idea of what I'm setting up. Um, but in this case, I was kind of just checking it out real quick and it actually answers my previous question of, uh, yeah, I'm not good at it. But if you can see here, there's a little line there and it shows it from basically tangent to the edge here, going down to the center and where it ramps back in. Um, not only does it show the ramp in, uh, it's hard to do and talk and focus at the same time. <laughs> there we go. Not only does it show the ramp in, which I like, it also shows that kind of angular path to the center. So it does actually leave wherever it finished the last hole. It comes straight up and then comes to the center of the next hole. So that's uh, good to know. Um, and it noticed that it does it on these guys too. So it'll be kind of at the bottom of the hole and it cuts right across so yeah answer my own question there uh so anyway we've got it posted up we'll go back to the g code i think we're pretty well set here i'm gonna grab some eyes and well i think we're gonna run this get him shishy get him Better in a nature documentary. Yeah, the fearsome hunter. <laughs> Had enough fun with it. Surprised you haven't tried eating it yet. All right, as I was saying, uh, I think we're pretty well set. We'll cycle start this and, <coughs> oh, excuse me. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. It's always slightly scary. At least for me it is. It's not gonna be quite on that mark for the first one, mostly because I, I offset it by about a quarter inch. So that's acceptable for it not to be uh, right. <laughs> and it does the ramp in. It looks pretty good. Oh, it 
because it's going for the second pass. So I programmed it for, for basically two cuts um, for each depth to get to the full inch and a half. The first one, um, because oh, I used the clear height of two inches, just that so would clear these nuts, and that's why it took a while. <laughs> pass just to widen it out just a little bit it was tighter than i wanted it to be but uh, otherwise i'm very happy with it i'll make an actual shelf for it in a little bit here or probably be tomorrow's job but for now i got my cnc fun in uh, i'd say it's a good start for the day catch you all next time